quite old. But I just want to speak about him. I picturize, no wonder Jesus attracted so many disciples, so many crowd followed him when, wherever he went. He, he, I, I imagine Jesus sitting by the rock or, or you know, a stool or whatever and chewing that grain and telling the parables to the people and, and there are times where he frowns, there are times where he laughs, there are times where he's serious, there are times where he's fun and it's just so fun. And that I look and I saw that um, on Pastor Stephen Lowe's face and time flies so fast. And, we were supposed to finish at 3 usually, right? Yesterday was 4.30 and I thought it was still 3 o'clock. That was how interesting. So are you ready for his sermon? Are you ready? Okay, Pastor Stephen, over to you. <laughs> she will introduce himself. Yes. I can't, I can't wait to hear. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. You know? This is the first time I'm with you and I bring greetings from Grace International Church in Johor Bahru as well. Johor Bahru is not very far. It's only about uh, three hours away if you drive fast enough. If you drive too fast, you may not, you may not reach there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, you're always welcome. Right, always welcome. Don't cross over to Singapore, very expensive, 3.5 times more <laughs> you will have to spend, right? Yeah, but thank God, thank God to be here. And yesterday we really had a good time. And today I also have a very wonderful time, you know, because early in the morning I met someone whom I have never met for the past 40 over years. Professor Dr. Lee. Yeah. yeah, you just imagine. So it is very good to be in the kingdom of God. You know, every time when you are in the kingdom of God, you have a lot of surprises. God always gives us very wonderful and very pleasant surprise. Yeah. So that was really wonderful, no? Yeah. Huh? Not only so long, huh? I almost fail his subject. You know, his subject is very tough. <laughs> but he teach very well. It is only myself, huh? This takes car not so clever. <laughs> yeah, you no. Know? Uh, but thank God I graduated. You know? <laughs> then I also love the engineering course that I'm doing so much that um that I for 30 over years, yeah, I didn't let go of my engineering. I do engineering. I also do elsewhere. Uh, I started foundries, I started factories, I do all kind of uh, very heavy industry dealing with furnaces, dealing with wire ropes, and dealing with lives. Yeah, because engineering is always dealing with lives. You know, sometimes a lot of people think that it is only mechanical. It is not. It is human mechanistic. <laughs> All right, come. Let us pray huh, before I begin. Father, we want to thank you and praise you for such a wonderful blessings of coming together to worship you, and Lord. All our lives, all about us, is all about worship. It's all about your glory. It's about your honor. It's about giving you, Lord, the life that you have created in us, that we are able to enjoy the Shrikana glory of yours. Father, eventually, as we pass on in this life, we too will see you face to face. We too will be with you again. And that time, Lord, we will be with you always singing Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. And we are with you in that moments of splendor. Lord, we look forward to that indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we have the message. All right. No message yet. Ah, yes. Ah, okay. Before the message, I just want to tell, okay, the message come up. Oh, cannot see. No, that is a beautiful part of it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to share with you the message today. Yeah, as, a, as I, um, I find that this is something that is deep in my heart. Uh, when I was, um, when I, I actually, I actually stopped my professional work about 11 years. Go on to do all the, um, uh, ministry work, but majority of the time I'm doing a lot of training. 
right? A lot of training. So uh, I come back to I come back to Malaysia in 2014 from China, and then after that, uh, I began to do uh, the work here. Now, one of the things that I found, one of the things that I always find yeah, in, our, in our lives is we always need to be encouraged again and again and again and again. Am I right? Yeah, you know, if we are not, then there's something. Um, we, will, we will fall asleep. Yeah, if, if not, we will fall. So tell the person next to you, don't fall asleep today. <laughs> yeah, don't fall asleep today, yeah? No. All right. Um, uh, is it possible to get it up? Uh, uh, or we have a moment of silence? <laughs> yes, no. Right. Now, I want to share with you today the message. It's called Awakening, Aligning, and Assigning. Huh? Awakening, Aligning, And beyond, <laughs> oh my age and beyond. You know how old am I? Actually, just now the picture is my brother. <laughs> yeah, taken <laughs> long time ago. Um, I'm I'm already above sixties. Yeah, so some of you may be that. And uh, awakening, aligning, and assigning may not apply to you. Yeah, but you you just add another word in front called re. Reawakening, reassigning, realigning. Amen? All right. So, awakening to God, aligning with Christ, assigning to the kingdom duty. Tell the person next to you these three phrases, right? Yeah. My topic is very special. It's called call to duty, right? Ah, awakening to God, aligning to Christ, and assigning to His kingdom duty. Next. Yeah. Um, okay, beautiful picture, right? You know who is he? This is my grandson. Yeah? I only take the picture yesterday. <laughs> I received the picture yesterday. It's very interesting, right, for children to sleep. And um, when you see the face like that, what do you see? Yeah, he, he actually, uh, actually, frankly speaking, uh, my, my daughter tell me he is not supposed to eat the cookie, you know, the chocolate cookie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the friend who is behind the seat of the car, you know, uh, secretly pass him the cookie, right? So he he ate it. Of course, children all like cookies, yeah. So he ate it, you know. And then, um, <laughs> you know, don't know how to clean the mouth, uh. <laughs> so they become like that, you know. So sometimes, uh, we are asleep, you know, correct or not? And then there are traces uh, of something that is left behind. We don't know, right? So it look very awkward. Next, yeah. You know, yeah. But you know, to us as an adult, we need alarm clock. We need to wake up, right? We need a wake up call actually. And this wake up call sometimes must be from God. Sometimes it's not just from anybody else. You know, uh, recently one of my friends, he said we want to serve God, and then suddenly he has a heart issues, right? He has a heart issues, and then when when he go to see the doctor, the doctor addressed him and so on. Finally, he was cured. Yeah? He was cured. And then he was like refired, a totally different person. I asked him, Why make, what makes you so different? He said, because God is the one that gave me an awakening call, a wake-up call. Before that, I only want to look for money. I'm only interested in Possessions. I'm only interested in my BMW and my Mercedes and my bungalow. But today, I dance. You know, what I want now is to make my life worth it. Yeah. This is a wake up call yeah, for a lot of people. Next. Yeah. So, this, this book is very interesting. You can get hold of this book. Buy this book and read. Yeah? She said, at the core of every believer, at the core of every believer, there's a profound yearning for a higher purpose, a deeper desire to witness the manifestations of God's kingdom on earth. But this longing is not a fleeting whim, but a divine call for everybody. It's a divine call for everybody. An invitation to join a timeless and space transcending awakening movement from the moment you become a child of God. Amen? Are you a child of God? Yes. 
uh, tell the person next to you, awaken for the divine call. I thought I have to shout all the day. No, 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 it's okay. I will shout until I got no more voice. <laughs> yeah. Then, then after becoming Christ, like Christ, you begin to be able to rest with Him. Yeah. Salvation is about rest, right? Salvation is about resting in the Lord. That how we have peace, we have shalom. No, we have the joy of the Lord. And even under any kind of situation, even the pandemic, you are still able to rest have, uh, safely in his bosom. Yeah? But the next one is not only just resting in him, but you work with him, work with Christ. And after that, you reveal Christ to others. And that is one of the greatest call of our lives. It's not only just to keep whatever that God has blessed us. We love blessings, all of us, right? Other people also like blessings, <laughs> right? But other people, they can only receive blessings from how you give them, not so much of how you keep them. The moment you keep them, they can never get it, right? So you have to give them. So focus. This is our focus. Focus, let God do the assigning. We do the aligning, right? We let our view align with Christ. Next. Yeah. Okay, see, I want you to see a few pictures to give you a wake-up call. Come, one by one, yes. Some more. What do you see? The last picture is actually yeah, only yesterday, huh? the typhoon, Yagi. What do you see here? Terrible situation, right? When people are without God, Everything, anything can happen in their lives. And sometimes we say, what? What guy? <laughs> huh? Huh? They deserve it sometimes. But just imagine, all of us actually deserve death. All of us deserve to be punished. All of us deserve God's judgment. All of us deserve His unmerciful kind of uh, treatment. But God... Love us. Grace of eternal life. And we receive it. And our life change. Am I right? So when your life change, there are still so many that their lives are not changed. They are being fooled by somebody else. By the, by the evil one. Right? So even during the, this coming Olympic, the, the, the new Olympic, you can see all kinds of manifestations of that. Now, these are the extreme. Yeah? Malaysia is very peaceful. You don't get all kinds of these type of things. Right? You, you, don't, you don't see all these things except the empty shell, you know, where all the toilet paper are being sold. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the houses, some of your houses may have 10 years supply of Toilet paper, no, I don't know. Because when I see them buying toilet paper, I think that must be last for 10 years or more. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Unless go, go cross, take it first. Right. So you just imagine we have a lot of insecurity, a lot of uncertainty. No. And all these things can only be resolved if Christ is there. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what we must do. Yeah. Let's see what we must do. The trumpet is blowing, just like the day of Gideon. Now, during the time of Gideon, the Israelites sinned against God, cried to God, and God gave them judges yeah, to save the nations. And during this, the 
animals, you know, killing as well as ransacking and ravaging all their fields until people cannot survive. Some, most of them have to even live in the little secluded as well as a very hidden place in order to make a living by doing wine press and things like that in a very, very little place. And it was during this time when people cry out to God. And when people cry out to God, God raised up Gideon to champion uh, the people. Gideon initially gathered a lot of people. But finally, God said, it's too many. Too many. Right? Finally, God chose for them only 300 over people. The moment when they chose the right people, the trumpet blows. The trumpet blows. You see here, he said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And he started blowing the trumpet. And when he blew the trumpet, what happened? People gathered, right? The, Ab the Abyssalites gathered. And then after that, the messenger sent to Manasseh. The messenger sent to Asher, sent to Zebulun, sent to Naphtali, sent to the different tribes of Israel. And the people gathered. And then they start fighting the war and win the war against the Midian. The Midian were in the hundreds of thousands. 300 people can win the war with hundreds of thousands. How? And ally together, wake up, you know, to the battle. Right? So tell the person next to you, wake up, don't sleep. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Wake up. Uh, next. Yeah. Okay. Right. I want to tell this story. This is a very interesting story about wake up. Yeah. The prodigal son. Uh, next, please. Yeah. All right. So, next. Uh, all right. Let us, uh, let me read this. Yeah. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 24. I think all of you are very familiar with these parab parables that Jesus tells. Uh, but these parables have a lot of very deep meaning in it. Sometimes we just read parables like story, you know, and then we just, we just let it go. Um, but let us today read it in the sense that it come and give us some message into the heart. The, the, the parables goes like this. A man has two sons and have a big estate, right? But then the, the two sons uh, start working in the field, the younger son tell the father, got bored, you no, know, with we skin chunk life huh, in the field, you no. Know. Every day see only the uh, fishes from there and a lot of thoughts and uh, and um, and what is that? And uh, and all the animals and a very boring life. So they, he decided that he, he saw pictures huh, and videos of Kuala Lumpur and PJ, you know. Yeah. Wow. Atrium, you know. Paragon. No joke. Yeah. So he decided to tell his father, I want to go somewhere else. This life is too bad for me. It doesn't fit me. Right? It doesn't fit me. So I want to go to a bigger place. But instead of going himself, he tell his father, Father, I know some of your, whatever is yours, what part of it belongs to me. Why not give what that belongs to me now? Don't even argue with. Don't even challenge. Don't even negotiate. Don't even uh, analyze with the son. He just give, right? Wow, I hope my father like that, no? but my father is not like that. No? He, he hold very tight. Yeah, you know? so, so he gave. And the son took the money, took all the gold, took all the silver, took whatever things that belong to him and start going to Kuala Lumpur and to PJ. You know? But unfortunately, he landed up in Bukit Bintang, you know? where, where you know, he's surrounded with all this, all this vice. Huh? Then finally, he lost everything. <laughs> yeah, all right? Then after that, he want to find a job, but he, got, he only know how to plant paddy. He don't know how to do engineering, no, no electronics, don't know IT, you know. So what did he do? He cannot do anything, so somebody recommend him. 
go to Serenda, go and rear chicken, you know. So he went and rear pigs. Yeah, one of the terrible things to do, you know, during the time. After he rear, then he realized, you know, oh goodness, how come I live like that? You know, I must, I must do something different. So he says here, he came to his senses. After he came to his senses, he said, my father's house got all kinds of things, even hired hands. All the maids are there, you know. They all live so well. My father treats them so well. They, are so, they, are, they live so happily together. They got food, they got shelter, they got everything. Now I'm his son and I'm suffered. So he said, I want to make this special uh, decision. And this decision is that I will set up and go back to my father's house and say to him, Wow, well, Father, I'm and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So make me like one of your higher servants. That's all. That's all I ask for. You know, I have already squandered all your, all the property that belong to me, right? So I don't demand that. I don't deserve it anymore. So just make me like one of your servants, like one of your higher hands. Now, what did he say? What did he say, the son? One very important thing about the son is that he come to his senses. He come to his senses. He's suddenly awake, yeah? By the, by the condition that he lived, suddenly he awakened. That's it. I'm not here. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be in my father's house. I'm supposed to be his son. I'm supposed to live like a prince. But now I'm living in this kind of, we call it. And he said, wow, I must go back. The decision is action, right? I must go back. I must go back. So he went. Next. So he went. Yeah? Off he go. And after he go, his father saw him, right? Far from it. The far, far away. The father. Huh? So you just imagine what the father did. The father didn't just sit down there, you know, every day playing with handphone. You know, to see whether the son uh, posts on the Facebook or the WhatsApp or not. But the, son, the father keep looking, right? Looking for what? Looking for the shadows of his son to come. The longing of the father's heart. The longing of the father's heart. That the son to come back. And then after that, he said, while he was still very far off, his father saw him. You know, I'm very, I'm very glad. You know, I, just now when I talk to Dr. Lee Ming Kun, his eyes still so good. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. You know, and actually, I couldn't recognize him because he was very handsome during that time. Now also handsome, yeah, but different shade. Right? No. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, just imagine. His father saw him from far away. And his father didn't say, Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah, so shabby. Cannot be, you uh, know. Cannot be my son. Uh. My son don't dress like that, you know. When he went out that time, uh, oh, uh, so much splendor with him. You know? Now how come he look like that? <sighs> and then after that, maybe the father waiting there and then see. And then after that, before... The sun come near, wow, the smell come first, right? Wow, all the dance, you know, all the, all the big stale, you know, all those smell come first. And the father go into the room and hide. Is it like that? No, opposite, right? The opposite. What did the father do? The father ran forward. Wow, I think that time, I don't know who gave him the energy, it must be God, now. Huh? The adrenaline suddenly flow, no, very hard, you know? and then he run forward and start what, start what, hug him, and then kiss him. I tell you lah, if for me I don't know what to do, <laughs> yeah, you know? but he hug him, kiss him, right? Forget about what he looks like and so on. To him, he is still the son. He is still the son of his own heart of his heart. That is how God looked at us yeah, when we awaken, come back to Him.
that is how he respond next. All right? How he respond? So the son said to the father, you know, this phrase must be rehearsed in his mind on the way back, right? So he keep talking, you know. So he, he uh, like, uh, like a record, uh, like a record player or like the, like the, your MP3 last time. Uh, he just played, you know. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy of calling your son. Yeah. But the father stopped him, right? Because there is another sentence behind. The father stopped him straight away. The father said what? But the father stopped him. Quick, do something. Give him the best rope. Yeah? Put ring on him. And then at the same time, set the sandals to him. Reinstate him. The father reinstate him. Yeah? Let, him let us have a feast. Celebrate together. For the son of mine was dead and is now alive again. Was lost and is found. This is called awakening. This is the real thing about awakening. God Call us, give us Jesus to awaken the soul within us so that when we believe in Him, when we come back to Him, He hugs us, He ran to us, He hugs us, He kisses us. Amen. And He reinstates us, He gives us our rope, He gives us the ring, He puts sandals on our feet. There is a total restoration of the Lord God in our lives. And there is a very amazing picture because during those days, servants don't wear shoes. Servants don't wear shoes, right? Servants don't have ring on their finger. Servants don't have ropes. They only have garments. And this one is a complete restoration of dignity, of honour and of personhood, that you belong to this family once again. And that is what God has done for us. The moment when we came to the Lord Jesus, the moment when we came to the Lord Jesus, the moment when we believe in Him, that's all. No. He did much more. He embraced us, He kissed us, He reinstated all our dignity, all our honour as a human being created in God's image. And not only that, He celebrates our return. He celebrates our awakening. He celebrates the lives that He created and recreated again and restored. Amen. It's so beautiful, this picture, right? So again, you see the word celebrate occurs twice which means that it is a real thing and it is not just a say. Kill the fatal calf. Let us celebrate together because the son that was lost now returned. Amen. Now returned. It was such a great feast. So, in my church, you know, we always want to have a feast together and we do a lot of celebration. We find ways and means uh, to have celebration. Why? Because sometimes we forget who we are. We forget that we are in the family of God together. So the celebration brings forth who we are as a person, as well as how we relate to the family. And we celebrate because God asks us to celebrate. God desires us to celebrate that relationship with Him. Awakening. Amen. Let's go on, right? Otherwise, I have to speak until 2 o'clock. Uh, uh, right? And Revelation, you know, if you return to the book of Revelation, there are so many warnings about Jesus that are given to the church. And this is the warning that is given to the church of Theatria, you know, which after some times of ownership of being with Christ, the church changed colors. And then God says, in Revelation chapter 3, 2 to 4, this is the letters written to the church. Jesus writes seven letters to the church. If you have time, please read through all the seven letters and do it. it whatever it says during that time, when John penned it down, there was somewhere around 80, 85 to 95. Everything happened after that. All the churches are no more there, right? Wake up, he said. Wake up from what? 
wake up from your death sleep. You sleep so well. No, you are almost like drugs, he said. Almost like drug to sleep. He said, wake up. Strengthen what remains of the life you have been given. And is of danger of death. He said, I have judged your deeds as far as from complete in the sight of my God. Therefore, remember what you have received and heard. It is time, it is time to keep this instruction and turn back from your ways. If you do not wake up from this sleep, I will come in and judgment and I will creep up on you like a thief. Yeah. This is a modern translation of the verse and the verse is, is not easy to read but this translation very pointed out very clearly to us. How do you read this verse? Wake up. Wake up. From what? Wake up from our slumber. You know, sometimes after receiving Christ for some time, you know, I have a lot of friends of who are, uh, because uh, I accept Christ around 1981. And then since then, already 40 over years, right? And then I, uh, for 40 over years, I was in the church. Because although I work, but I'm almost like bivocational. No? I work at the same time I serve in the church. Uh, because God touched my heart so much uh, that I just love Him. I just want to serve Him. Uh, so I do both. And so many people actually come to the church and very comfortable, you know, very comfortably sit. I, I, I'm very glad, you know, this chair uh, is not very comfortable, <laughs> yeah, you know, in the church. Yeah. You know, I went to one church. The chair, the chair costs about four five hundred dollars per chair. And you sit down there, you know. Wow. You don't want to get out anymore. <laughs> you know, it's just like you sleep on um, what? There's one type of of uh, bed called guitar. Is it guitar? Guitar, guitar. Huh? Uh, and then with the pillow also guitar. Uh, and then with aircon on. I tell you, you don't want to wake up. Yeah, right. So sometimes, uh, don't make your life too comfortable. <laughs> right. Wake up. His God says, wake up. Wake up from your deep sleep. Wake up and remember what that has already given to us. So that as we wake up and heard, as well as knowing again from our ways and come back to Him. The word is repent. But over here is that turn back. Turn back from your ways and come back to Him. Tell the person next to you, turn back to God. Turn back to God. Come back to God. Remember again what that He says to you. You know, in the first letter, He tell the Ephesus church, He said, He's not only just wake up, He says, you have lost your first love. Sometimes, we are so caught up with so many things in our lives. 12 to 13 hours we work every day in the company. Correct or not? When you are work, those who are working understand what I'm saying. Jam, right? KL jam sometimes one and a half hours, sometimes two hours. Yeah? Together, to and from maybe three hours. Together with your work. At the house. When you come back to the house, you have no more energy left. Your only energy left is to look at WhatsApp and Facebook, right? Yeah. And then after that, you, you have no more energy. Don't, don't even look at the Bible, yeah? The moment when you see this book of the Bible, no, uh, so black color, uh, you fall asleep straight away, yeah? So that is sometimes describe what our lives is all about. But God said, wake up. Wake up. Do something. Turn back. Turn back from our ways. This morning as we worship, wow, the worship is so beautiful. No? The worship called us to the splendor of God, called us to come back to God, called us to be intimately related to Him, called us to worship Him in all the splendor and glory, called us to return, called us to change our lives, called us to a life of transformation. Later, you listen to the message. Some may get bored and sleep, but thank God now all of you are so awake. <laughs> you know, 
And then what happened? You go back home. After makan, uh, your nice curry, chicken and laksa, you know, as well as uh, KL, what is most famous. Uh, Subang Jaya, you have bakut there. You know? After eating and so on, and then after you go to the toilet, you forget everything. <laughs> yeah, you know? Then our life go back to normal. Six days a week, our life turn back to normal. Thank God, uh, over here you have prayer meeting. Uh, Wednesday, Saturday, uh, some more goes Friday meeting and things like that. Yeah, try to join, right? So that you know that we want to hear the word of God more. Come ne next, right? So there is awakening. Tell your, tell the person next to you, awaken. Sleep, wake up, right? Wake up, wake up. Listen to God. He is there waiting for you, waiting for you, waiting to embrace you. Kiss Him. He wants to kiss you. He wants to have that so intimate relationship with you, right? Okay, wake up. Next, we want to look at aligning. Now, you, a lot of you drive, right? Drive your cars. New cars, old cars, you know, you drive. KL Road especially, yeah. the rain. Uh. Yeah, then after that what happened? Your, your wheels? Your wheels? Your, your, your tire uh, somehow or other don't listen to you anymore sometimes, right? It, it misalign. It, 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 it go away from the actual alignment. And then when you drive, uh, your car start wobbling and, and uh, shaking. And then you know that it is time to align your tire, right? It's a time to align. So we need to align back again. As we move on, we need to keep aligning back. We need to align and realign and realign. Come next. Yeah. So what, what are we aligning? What are we aligning? We align to understand God's purpose in our lives. We are created for a reason. All of us are unique. Right? All of us are unique in God's hand. Well, today, you know, I, I heard... Not only uh, he not only just uh, can teach well, uh, lecture well in, in Ta College, he can also play guitar. Not only I know that he can play guitar. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and he asked me, what can I do? I said, I love photography. Uh, I bought a set of very heavy and very expensive camera, but that camera now is in the storage. You know? but, but he is good. He buy another guitar, classical guitar. Uh, yeah, four thousand dollars. Oh, sorry, I, I shouldn't tell the price. <laughs> right? So, uh, no. Wow, to me, it's unimaginable. No, because I th I think our age should be quite different, right? I don't know, uh, but <laughs> yeah. But you just imagine at his age, he pick up classical guitar again. You know, he just tell me that uh, he study his PhD and at the same time go into classical guitar and because he want to serve. Just I took one of his pictures, Tao Tao. Uh, I, 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 I silently I take one of his pictures there, you know, because I see his very exy, uh, very <laughs> full of action. <laughs> no, 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 very nice, uh, you know, there. So, so that, that called us that every one of us have a purpose. Every one of us are different. Every one of us are so unique. I don't know how to play guitar. I try to pick it up many times, you know. I play until my finger very painful. Uh. Yeah, when my finger painful, I give up. Uh. Yeah. Then next time I play again, painful again, give up again, you know. So until today, I haven't learned. But you see, the passion in your heart, as well as the uniqueness that God has made you, that create in you a special desires of wanting to serve Him in different ways. So He said, all of us are unique in God's grand design. Our purpose deeply connected to what? His will and the advancement of His kingdom. Amen. So everything about our lives, whether is it work, whether is it house, house management, home management, yeah, my wife graduated uh, from business studies, uh, but um, after we got married, she became 
Home General Managers, Financial Managers, CFO, you know, everything. And that's the reason why I also take her along uh, in most of my, the ministry because she is my director. Yeah, all right. So, so, <laughs> yeah. So you just imagine, I'm so happy that she is here also. Uh, uh, she listened to my talk some many times. I think sometimes she said, uh, Stephen, talk like that again. <laughs> yeah. So, so you see, everybody are different, but there's one person. What is one purpose that all of us are engaging in? Is to, is to connect with Him in His will, His will as well as His kingdom, as well as His kingdom. Whatever we do, check ourselves. Is it having an eternal purpose of advancing His kingdom? That is what we call aligning. Next. Yeah. No. So, Esther is a very good example. You know, Esther, very beautiful. During that time, when King Artaxerxes wanted to find another queen, yeah, he searched through the whole country. He wanted to find someone very unique and very special. And Mordecai come to know about it. His uncle, uh, her uncle Mordecai come to know about it. So Mordecai said, why not you go for audition as well? And she went. And she was so beautiful. And the king loved her. So the king took her as a queen. But then after that, something happened in that nation. Right? In that nation, also there is a terrible fellow you know, who wants to kill the Jews. His name is Haman. Right? Now, Haman means humming uh, people. Uh, no? No, Haman. So Haman wanted to kill Jews. Genocide. So you see, genocide is not only now. Genocide is already there a long time ago. So, but then Mordecai heard about it and know about that. So Mordecai called Queen Esther. Now he, she is a queen. And Mordecai is still nobody. Yeah? So she told, he told Esther, Esther, go to the king. Go to the king. Because, because your people are in danger, are in peril. And Queen Esther said, well, I cannot go to the queen, to the king. Only when the king call and extend his scepter to me, then only I can see him. Otherwise, I'll be killed. I go in without call, you know, I will be killed. You know, not like nowadays, you know, sometimes we worship God. Nah. We worship God nah, like he is buddy buddy, you know, but actually he is not. Nah. He is king of king, lord of lords. And, and similarly to the king, if the king don't summon you, you can't even go near him, right? Otherwise, you lose your life. And that is what queen, even the queen also understand that. And the queen said, well, no. Let me think about it. I don't think so it work. But Monica tell her what? He said, don't you know that you are actually entering into that position for a time such as this? And Esther then called Monica, pray, fast, and we will fast and pray together. And then I will go to the king. You see, every one of us in this season, in this time, what is your call? How you align whatever you do in God's will, with God's kingdom, with His work. Time is urgent. I must Look at the situation in the world, just like the pictures that I show you. Jesus come anytime. What are you doing? It's the most important question that all, all of us have to ask. Next. Right? So Queen Esther. And God tells us, He has a plan for our lives. He has a plan for our lives. We, we love this phrase very much because He tells us what? For He said, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plan to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you success and a hope in the future. Wow, very nice. We claim this, right? But we forgot that we have to do something. Yeah? We claim it. But during the time when Jeremiah talked about this verse, is when the nations are actually going to be exiled, as well as some of them are already exiled, right? They are in a terrible state. And, and, and in that state, 
And everybody said, Jeremiah, you said the wrong thing. You must tell us a more positive thing than this. And God gave the Israelites this message. You are going to exile. You are going to suffer. You are going to be persecuted. But I have a plan for you. And this plan is the one that brings you hope and future. You see, when we are able to align our will, our will to God's will as well as we may suffer from persecution, we may be tested, we may have gone through trials, we may suffer in pains and sickness and illness and all kinds of things. We may We talk about praying for Hakka. I want to tell you this. Many years ago, we had Uh, to the Miao people. We went there, there's no language. There's no language in this. There's only spoken language, there's no written language. And a lot of people try to go in. They preach gospel to the, to the uh, what we call, Sausu Mingzu, to the minority, huh? are very dangerous because in China, you can be caught and put into jail. So for us, we're thinking, what? Either do or don't do. Do also die, don't do also die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you do? Do la and die la. No? Yeah. So we did. Yeah? We went inside there, we preached to them, we shared with them. It is so difficult. Yeah. But eventually, some people began to believe in Jesus and a small group came and a small group became bigger and bigger and become a church. So you see, Our good and blessings alone. But how are we going to work with them? How are we going to share with them? The plans is not only just for us, the plans also for a lot of other people in this world. Next. Yep. So God give us a man. So he says here in Romans chapter 12, verse 2 don't conform to our own thinking. All of us have a set thinking one, you know. And all of us have a pre. of education, because of our, our fathers and grandfathers. You know, sometimes we say, you know, we already believe in Jesus, right? So, when we believe in Jesus, Jesus is in our heart. But whatever Jesus is in our heart, but the blood that flows in our veins is our grandfathers. <laughs> you know? So, when we do things, somehow or other, the way we do things, the way we resolve conflicts, the way we look at money, the way we look at ministry, the way we look at things or relationship around us or even race, even race, uh, races, even ethnic or even languages, right? Very much. Again, you know, one day I was in a church um, talking to the elders. And one of his friends came from Scotland and talked to these elders. He said, you know, elders, I saw your son. He has a new love. Wow. And then this, this uh, elder, uh, very happy. Uh, oh, at least he wants to find a wife. No? And then, he, and then he, this friend uh, tell the elder, no, he's black, shining, shining black. Wow. Oh, the father suddenly on the face, uh, we can see his face change one, you know. Wow, suddenly the face are uh, wow, very changed, you know, become, become very difficult to become very not nice to see. Like, yeah? wow. And then the, we all keep looking, you know, what does he mean? You know? And then the elder must be thinking, you know, wow, my son going to find an African, <laughs> you know, you know, black or some more signing, signing one. You know? Yeah. Finally, uh, the friend uh, don't want to give the father a heart. You know, his, his BMW sports. Wow, so beautiful. It's a BMW. <laughs> it's not a person. You know? oh, they only he released. You know? yeah. Now, what the, what, the, what the issue? It shows us uh, that even though sometimes we become Christian, right? And we keep thinking, all men are created by God. Everybody are the same. However, very difficult for us to accept people of other religion as well as other peoples of different ethnic groups. 
I was in Shanghai in international school, uh, international uh, church. Seventy nations of people come together to worship. When I was in Wuhan, um, we had and in that fellowship, I'm one of the elders, you know. So one elder from Malaysia, one elder from uh, Australia, one from Germany, one from America, one from Britain, British. Uh, UK, and we try to work together. Yeah, next time you try, uh, see whether you can work together or not. And then, <laughs> as one of the elder, right, uh, black and shining. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, in in the sense, we we God wants to our ideas of who we want to work with, how we want to work with others. But he said, be transformed so that we know what God's will is, right? His good, pleasing, and perfect will so that we are able right, to expand His kingdom according to His way and His purpose, not according to our way. Next. I must go faster, huh? otherwise you cannot go. Think about your own goal. What is your goal? When I first graduated, a group of us million. <laughs> yeah. Who can make the first million? Uh, uh, Dr. Lee, you know, uh, uh, what we call uh, very, uh, poor student like us, uh, always want to look for money. <laughs> right? So we, we, we make a pack, see who can make the first goal. Actually, a group of us, quite, quite a big group, uh, about 40 of us. Two years later, wow, someone really make it, you know. But those who make it early finally all left the church. All left the church. Two years, four years down the road, when we gather this group of very active CF Christian Fellowship, four years later, we left only one table. The rest of them all go missing. But thank God, you know, thank God. At 60 years old, a lot of them realign back. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, so really thankful. Nowadays, uh, I keep seeing people uh, who are 40 years I haven't seen one. You know. The other day, I just saw David Lau uh, in uh, High Guy. Also, 40 over years I haven't seen. You know. Then, because we are in the same ministry, we met each other. And we see so passionate, you know. A lot of them who lost their ways after that, uh, realign back, you know, to God's will and to God's way. And Next, please. Yeah. So align. Come, let us read this. Huh? Align with God's purpose. Align with God's will. Align with God's word. Yeah? Very important. Align back with God's word. God's word is so, pro, so, so important. I joined BSF, Bible Study Fellowship International, for seven years. Yeah? We started the one, we started the group in Johor Bahru. And after we, I st we started the group in Johor Bahru, we got so many people now. We got, I think we got about 70 over people now in that group. Yeah. So that's why yesterday I was talking to someone over here. He said, well, Johor Bahru group, huh? very vibrant. Yes. You know, because we are there uh, no, we carry rotan one. Eh? No, no, no. Yeah, no. So very good. No? Okay, next. Now we want to look at another. So don't be afraid. Huh? Don't be afraid to ask God to reveal His will to you. Because His will is always good. Right? Don't ever afraid to ask. Afterward, we can pray. Ask God. Ask God because He's big. God is big. So, so believe in Him. Believe and dream big. Next, please. Yeah. All right. Next, we go. The next one. Uh, uh, assigning. After awaken, after aligning, the next one is assigning. Right? So Jesus assigned His people after they are being aligned into His kingdom. Next. Yeah. So Jesus sent out the 72. Yeah. In Luke chapter 10, verse 1 to 2. He said, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of Him to every town, every place where He was about plentiful and the, and the workers are few. Ah, okay. 
put out your thumb, please. Put out your thumb. Uh, show me all your thumb. Right? Uh, point to the next person. You are the worker. Uh, I am not. <laughs> you are the worker. And I am too. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Huh? Uh, be serious about that. See, the workers are few. Why? Because all of us love to be in a more comfortable You know, this morning, our faces, they are beautiful. Yes. And then, after that, we come eat our nasi lemak, watch TV, watch your Facebook, and chat GPT. And then, after that, uh, all this, well, one day over. Start Monday, work, right? Work, 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 work. Uh, Sunday come again, right? Sunday come and then people usher you in. You sit down here, aircon room, very nice. Eat laksa, call a few friends, eat bakute, right? And then after that, go home. Then after that, check GPT, Facebook, WhatsApp, sleep. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Next Sunday, come again. Very interesting life, is it? Yeah. Think about it. The field is plentiful. He wants to send you. Want to send you. Uh, huh? Tell the person next to you, God wants to send you. And a lot of us think that when God sent us, it must be thing back to. and the tiger's roar, yeah? or where in Myanmar, where all the guns are fighting, or in Hindus, when people have not much thing to eat. No, the answer is not. The answer is start where you are. You know, we started in our church uh, some months ago. There's one Myanmar come to me with a picture of Jesus and ask me, you know, where to buy this? Uh? Pastor, where to buy this picture? I look at the picture. Then I didn't think much, you know. I said, go to the bookshop. Maybe the bookshop got. So he went to the bookshop and he couldn't find the picture. So he come back to me again. I cannot find the picture. They don't sell. So he asked me, where else can I find the picture? I look at the picture. I asked him, why do you want the picture? He said, the picture will protect me. Uh, the picture uh, will protect me. No? So I said, how the picture protect you? He said, this is a picture. So he can protect me. I said, no, this is not a picture of Jesus. This is a picture of Hollywood star. <laughs> you know? yeah. You know? yeah. So, so uh, actually it's a picture of Jesus. Uh, but I said, uh, it looks like it is a picture of Hollywood star. Then, then he starts scratching his head, you know. I also scratched my head, you know. What did I do? Uh? I said, I must actually also let them know who Jesus is, right? But we have different language. How to tell him? He's a Myanmar, you know. He only has very little Chinese, uh, understand very little Chinese. So that, that morning, very interesting. After talking to him, I came up to my office, I prayed. I said, Lord, what is that all about? And then, you know, I said, maybe we should risk them. Uh. But how to risk them? Amazing thing happened. One person called me up. He said, Stephen, there is a few Myanmar pastors who can speak English around. Do you want them? I said, yeah, yeah, I want to contact them. So I contact one of them. We start talking to these people and we start talking to some of the Myanmar's working around in the, in the coffee shop as well as all the restaurants. And then after we talked, we found that some of them are Christians, uh, escape from their countries, some of them are not, and a lot of them are Buddhists. You know what do we do? <laughs> without delay, uh, without delay, we start a Myanmar fellowship. We start and whoever wants to come. So the Myanmar fellowship, although it is sporadic, uh, it is not very consistent, they all uh, come over here, a lot of them are being exploited. Right? They work seven days a week. 12 hours a day, right? 
and then from 9 o'clock to 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. Now, how to meet them? Right? So I told the pastor, maybe we will meet them as where they are you know, on the weekdays. Of course, we haven't happened, but we start the fellowship and we start talking to them, praying for them, praying for those Myanmar that is around us. You see, the mission is right at your doorsteps. The Nepalese at your doorsteps. The Vietnamese at our doorstep. The diaspora Chinese also at our doorsteps. We started the Chinese church also in our church. Our church is very small. Our church is only one third of your size. Very small, yeah? About 50, 60 people. Over 40 people. Now, came over here and accepted Christ here in the church. Every, almost every week, we have people accepted the Lord. There was one family. Take a transit and then go to Johor Bahru. In Johor Bahru, uh, my friend pick him up, pick them up, go straight to the church. Yeah? And that morning I was preaching. We go, they, they go straight to the accepted the Lord that morning. No? They accepted the Lord that morning. The afternoon, we baptized. Two days later, they went back to China. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that things happen? I, I also cannot imagine. <laughs> this is the first time I did that. <laughs> no? but, but, but I can see, you know, the urgency of that. The Chinese, the urgency. We have a lot of Chinese. Mandarin. Wow, so many. Yeah, think about that. There are so many of them. And a lot of them, when they come into our midst, we don't different character, right? They are Chinese, but they are quite different from us. Think about, don't look at them Chinese. Look at them as what God look at them. You will love them because God loved them. You know how many Chinese are Christians today in China? You guess, give a guess, how many? We were there 11 years. Uh, we roughly know what is the figure like. The church that we started in Wuhan, we went to Wuhan. Uh, the church that we started in Wuhan are dispersed already, right? Dispersed into 20, 30 churches. Yeah, last time it's only one. There are more than 150 million Christians. More than that. Actually, much more than that. And a lot of them are very desiring to know. And until today, we continue to serve them. We continue to do training for them. Come next, right? So go, go, go to your neighborhood. Go to your neighborhood. We are destined, we are destined to conform to aligning means we must serve, we must reassign. And when reassign, we must conform to the image of Christ. Because there's only one message we share. The message of the gospel. And the message must be gospel-centered, must be about lives, about them, about God, about Jesus Christ, and about eternity. Come next. Yeah, so what our church we want to be? What our church we want to be? And Jesus... Let them hear. Let all of us hear. Let all of us open our ears, open our eyes, and listen and see what God is doing among our midst. I really thank God you know, for your church here. Yeah? Full of so vibrant things happening here. And build on it more. Encourage more. Engage more. Energize more. Right? Next. Yeah. I like this. <laughs> Yesterday, Michael showed me. I took the picture of this. Yeah. I love this. Loving God, love others, love yourselves, sharing Christ. Amen.
Come, let us pray. Let us all come together and pray. And ask God, God, awaken my spirit within me. Awaken the giant within me. Awaken my love for you within me. Awaken the desire of loving you, of loving others, of loving myself, of loving my neighborhood, of loving those who come into my doorsteps. Awaken the love within me. Awaken the desire of knowing you, of worshiping you within me. Awaken so that I can align with your purpose. Align with your will. So that I can to me. Align my life so that I can be like you. I can be like Christ. Though we are just broken jars of earthen vessels, but God has put the beautiful things and the treasure inside us so that we can be aligned with Him. And after having been aligned, God assigned us, reassign us, assign us to where you want us to be. Let your kingdom continue to build. Let your kingdom are prospering. Let your name are glorified that you are honoured and the day are coming where we will see you face to face. Lord, we pray. We pray for every one of us here. Lord, touch us. Touch our hearts deeply. Touch our lives deeply. Lord, it is not just about us. Although there's a lot of desires that we want you to touch us so that you heal us and, and, and also bless us. That is definitely true. But one more thing, touch us and reach us, engage us, that Lord, we are willing to surrender our lives for the kingdom. Lord, it is all about you. It's not just about us. It's all about you. So, Lord, awaken us, align us, assign us that, Lord, one day the whole earth will be filled with your glory and our worship become true and meaningful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for such a powerful message, a message of season for all of us. And uh, I have studied this word. It's a triple A rating. A for awakening. A for alignment. A for assignment. So remember, in the financial world, what is a triple rating? It's a fantastic, perfect rating, right? It's a variable, variable rating. And that's what the message is about for all of us. Okay. Let us receive his blessing. God blesses us so that we will be his hand of blessing to others. God calls us to look with grace 